and welcome to Strip Sessions, the podcast that exposes all. We're going to delve into the depths of Mr. Mercurial Virus, the one and only D10, and many other aliases (laughs) over the many years he's been in the dance industry. So, first of all, I'm going to need you to swear vows for me. Okay. On the Strip Session Bible. That sounds good to me. Darren, place your hand on the Bible. (laughs) Do you solemnly declare to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Do you swear to tell me all of your darkest gossip and secrets? (laughs) I swear to, yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's do this. Let's go. Okay. So, a little bit of an intro then. You've been in the industry for multiple decades now. Yeah. I'm exposing your age, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's always Botox, don't worry. That's um, true. You've been around for a long time. You are backed by the greats. So yeah. Scott Project, yeah. Dave Pierce. Yeah. You've had Radio 1 chart hits yeah. on the dance shows and things like that. So, I mean, incredible successes over the time. Some small, some very large, as all musicians do, yeah. DJs and producers. i better start by asking you, how have you had so much success and how have you just kept it going because you're a full-time dj producer how have you done it darren i think how i've done it is mainly through obviously networking but obviously when i joined it into the scene it was vinyl days so okay so the one there's many are you gonna give us a year um a rough well i started in 2002 (laughs) 2003 yeah. So when the okay. vinyl, so when it was vinyl days, it was uh, if you got a record on vinyl, it yeah. means your productions are good enough. Um, Is that what vinyl yeah. was? That yeah. was what it was represented. Yeah, by. because like you know, like now anybody can make a track of and course. then release it digitally. Well, in them days on vinyl, it was like you sent it off to a label, it would get no, uh... no, and all the rest of it. And then once they got it, it'd have to be. They usually would master it, and then they would put it on vinyl because it had to be mastered. Then put yeah, on vinyl. of course, yeah. And then it was the then you got a vinyl release from it. Oh my gosh! So that was pretty much like the equivalent of being signed when you're an independent yeah. artist now. Then vinyl. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Well, like now obviously being digital, it's not the same. But yeah. That's why there's so many artists now because they self-release and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah. vinyl day. So I was around then, and I was making. Well, when I did Not Over Yet, which was a, probably my second vinyl release that come out. Yeah, and that um, was the Neon Lights Neon remix. Re- yeah, yeah, Neon Lights D10 remix. And then as soon as I'd done it, uh, I sent it to Scott Project to see if he liked it. And he, was like, he wanted to sign it. He was straight like, away? Straight away. And I did you sign. send it to many or did you just send it I just right sent it to him because like, I got into hard trance, the German hard trance. And I was like... German hard trance? Yeah, because it's a bit different. It's more darker it's like heavier kicks and yeah. raspy bass lines and it's got the synth stuff it's a bit more darker yeah so at that time i was enjoying that yeah so i started i'd done that i sent it off he loved it wanted to sign it but the trouble was i'd already steve hill had sent me like the vocals and stuff like that and he wanted me for his label massive uh, so it was like so what did you do well i sent it frankie loved it i said i can't sign it with you because it's Steve Hill's label. Yeah. And then Steve's like, not only from not over yet, he's like, I want to sign you and I want you to be one of my artists. So I was done. That's why I ended up wow. doing more like Binary Harder, Children. Uh, it was all like, say, bootleg remixes. One of the of... most iconic hard trance songs, by yeah. the Yeah, exactly. Mic drop. <laughs> that's it. So I did all of those in the end, but Frank, as soon as he, because that's his real name, Frank. Who? Scott Project. Scott Project. Yeah, Frank Zenker. Okay. And then what happened was he was playing at God's Kitchen when I was there. Yeah. I was in the DJ booth with him and he played it in front of me. Oh, and wow. I watched it all play. I was like, oh, this is amazing. Wow. And then, and then even better was uh, Steve will come over from, from Australia. Yeah. And we, we went to Dance Valley because he was playing in Holland. Yeah. And Frank was there and he played it there. And wow. then Steve will played and that's from like 60,000 people. Amazing. Out, outdoor of a festival like Dance wow. Valley. And was that like, was, wow. what year was that then when you 2004 that was. 2004. Yeah. So you continued to have hit after hit and all over your socials, you're releasing all the time still. Yeah. What is that reason? Like, how have you kept it going, I th- that success? And I think like... Passion as well. Yeah, oh, definitely passion. Definitely. Yeah. Because I only make stuff that I like. Okay. 
Do you right. know what I mean? I'm yes. not going to make garage or something because I'm not really a fan of garage music or I'm not going to make... Do you really like yeah. it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if it's a genre I'm not keen on... You I'm... can't put your heart in it. Nah, so you're not going to get the end result. So it's not a magical production wizard that you hide in the cupboard at home? No, no, nah, nah, it's not something I'll just pull out. No, really. <laughs> yeah, right, there we go. That's going to be a hit or that's going to do that for me. Brilliant. And I saw actually on that point, so you're, I guess you're, what you're saying there is that passion and doing something that you're proud of yeah, in everything yeah. that you release has kept you going and yeah, kept yeah. you authentic. Yeah. And I saw uh, Bowie did it like a little miniature interview many years ago and he said the same thing. Oh, did I? Yeah. He said exactly the same thing. If you don't love your music, yeah. you're, you you won't have a hit. You cannot go and produce things that you don't that's true. feel. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that totally was true. also his secret. So basically you're David Bowie, does. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. Amazing. All right. So let's go right back to the beginning again. So 2003, 2004 is when you started to release things. Yeah. What age were you when you with. made your first production yeah. and what made you do it? So who inspired you to do that or what inspired you? Well, strange because uh, at the time I was playing semi-professional football and, yeah. and I was a dental technician. Um, yeah. And I, I wasn't really into like music because I didn't know much about dance music. Um, yeah. The only thing I knew from years ago, like, I think it was 86, I might have heard Jean-Michel Jarre. My dad used to play... Um... What was that? <laughs> Jean right, you're from it, and you're talking in a different language. Okay. <laughs> Slower. No. Jean-Michel Jarre. Jean-Michel Jarre, okay, Yeah, he's cool, a yeah. massive electronic artist. He used to yeah. play all the biggest... He used to do, like, concerts in cities. It, actually, in the city, yeah. all these visuals up on the buildings, and he millions of people be there and he'd just do it live like synthesizers and he'd have like a team with him and he did oxygen okay uh, rendezvous oh he wow he did all these massive hits and they are massive those yeah. aren't they yeah. yeah if you look them up millions and millions of course right so i heard that I and mean, my dad was like alvis and all these other things right but i was just like oh yeah it's music it's cool but then like when I was playing semi-pro, semi-pro football yeah. and I was a dental technician, yeah. this woman told me about Judge Jules on Radio 1. I was like... God, old Judge Jules. I didn't even know who he was at the time. No. And I was like, oh, I'll have a listen. So I had a listen and yeah. then the tracks that come on, like Chicane, Saltwater, yeah. Born Refinery, uh, 99, yeah. it was the Goyella remix. And then there was uh, the Morrigan Remember, which was a land remix. Yeah. So I was like, oh, what's this? I like this. Uh, so that got me into and was trance. It, would you say it was like the beats or the euphoric sound? What was it that you heard that made you... I think it's all the euphoric sounds yeah. and the... As it was a whole production, it was really nice. And obviously the breakdowns and then it builds up and it's... It's emotive, isn't it? Yeah, definitely emotive. I didn't realise how emotive dance music is in general. Yeah, it's very... You know, because you hear on the charts, you hear house and things like that, which is melodic, but then what you, no one really thinks of, like, hard trance or... No, no, even, that's it. Or even techno as being emotive or emotional yeah. because it sounds hard. But it's a certain emotion. Everything's yeah. got an emotion. So it, so it was actually probably... Maybe it was that that you heard oh, in definitely. the song, the beats, it just stood out for you. And then... Yeah, it really takes on the journey, the whole trap, doesn't it? And that's what yes. I like. Yeah. Because it's not... That's why I can't get into house music, because I find it, it's repetitive, it's a bit boring. Yeah. I know it's like... And there's so many subgenres as well now yeah, like that. Yeah. But for me, yeah, the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a bit... Mm, not for me. Yeah. But where trance, it's got the melodies, the strings and... And it's like euphoric, the it build ups, the drops, everything's to me just, I don't know, just oozes what I feel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's oh, God, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Okay, brilliant. So it was that that got you into it. And can you remember like the first track that you ever made? Or well, a good you... one or a. <laughs> no, like the first when you Very sat down one. and you went, I'm going to either learn to make a track or I'm going to make a track yeah. with someone. What was it? Paint a picture for me. Where were you? What well, were you doing? When I heard the music, I thought, I want to make something like this. Because I'm very creative. Like, um, I do my own videos, do my own artwork. Yeah. I do. When I was playing football, I wanted to design my own football boots and all sorts. Really? Yeah, yeah. I wanted my own. I always want my own. I want to be unique. Yes. I don't want to be like yes. everyone else. So I just like, I was like, I've got to build my own tracks. And then I was looking up software, found Fruity Loops. That's the one that kept coming up. Fruity Loops? Yeah, yeah. It's an old it wasn't one. wasn't Logic then? No, well, Logic used to be on PC then, but yeah. I did get it at one time, like later on. 
oh, I couldn't work. I couldn't get a sound <laughs> out of it. But now it's on Mac, it's a lot easier. Love that. But yeah. um, Fruity Loops was really good for like making beats because you had like a step sequence and you could just draw where you and are you self taught with your production? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is way before YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was yeah, in the yeah. dial up era on AOL. Nee, 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 that's nee, it. Nee, nee, nee. Get off the phone! <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm well, using the internet! That, and then that's it, it takes 10 years to load one page. That's it, yeah. 10 hours later. God, yeah. if you tried that now, you'd be going, God, this is rubbish. Yeah, but you, so you're doing Fruity Loops on an old dial up then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, like, obviously, I was contacting Lange because, like, I've seen his name on loads of productions, especially yeah. like, support Trans Nation too. Yeah. And it had like all these wicked tracks like uh Lost Witness, Red Sun Rising, Land Remix. Yeah. He had loads of remixes on there. So he's caught your eye as well. Yeah, right? so straight away I saw a lot of his stuff. And Ferry Corsten, he did loads. They're both still iconic, aren't exactly. they? It's like timeless, isn't it? it? That's the thing. And like I was like, oh, so I didn't know how to get in touch with people, but I found Lange's email address. And I emailed Did him to be a bit cheeky, like, get an email in, yeah. how'd you make this and how'd you do this? And he would help, he actually guided me a little bit. And then when he was playing at Passion in Leicester, I'd, I'd go up there with, like, a little mixtape. And CD. is he nice, Lang? He's a really nice guy. What's his real name? Stuart, Stuart Langlarn. <laughs> Yeah. They never have glamorous names, do they? Nah. It's like Lange, Stuart. It's, that's it, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm Fred. John, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, John, John Smith. Yeah, okay. So so he's, he actually, I didn't actually know that, that he guy, he's guided you then. Yeah, he just sort of give me little tips. Because obviously right. never do YouTube then. Um, so you're at home, you've got your Mac, you've got your fruit. I was on uh, PC then. PC? I had, yeah, I had a PC and there's all... I think I went for about five or six because of burnt the processors. Yeah. I used to like... Well, like a two RAM, something yeah, like that. Yeah, because obviously it was weak then and I was just whacking all these plugins on and doing all this and then like it's overheat and then they start crashing. I was like, oh, <laughs> the rubbish these are. <laughs> so so what what was it, the track you made, the first one? Very, you, was actually, it the one that he helped you with? Uh, Not released, like the first yeah, track you I, just made. So I call myself DJ Daz then. That was all. He... I'm so sorry that he did that. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking. I was just like new to it. DJ Jazz in the mix. I know. Yeah, it was. It was a bit of a wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't remember the name of the title because it was just so so bad. Yeah. But what was funny what, though? What was it? Trance. Yeah, it was trance. trance. It was. I only made trance at that time. Yeah. Because I was getting into it and I was into trance. Yeah, and, and it was um, massive in that era. I yeah, mean, it exactly. still is now, but it was oh, like huge it then. was. It was the house of now, wasn't it, yeah. Trance, back then? Yeah, because like, even I beef, they had loads of Trance artists then. Yeah, and, you know, they did, yeah. And they, God's Kitchen was open every week. Paradiso. Yeah, yeah. You had Gatecrasher, you had mm -hmm. Passion. So all the big events. And that was every week. Yeah. No, not like now, where they don't even happen now. No. God's Kitchen, I think they did an event, was it last year? That was it. Ibiza is not the one, is it, really? No, nah, it's not anymore. trans anymore. It's Malta like, is now, you know. Malta, Malta. Croatia, Luminosity, yeah. that's there, isn't yeah. it? It's all like the more island venues, I find, yeah. in trance now. It is. But, yeah, okay, brilliant. I'm, so oh, we, you don't, I can't note. access that, that track then. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, funny it. enough, though, funny enough, there was a remix competition for Sagittaire Shout, which is, I didn't realise at the time, it was one of Leslie's tracks. Oh, was it? Les and Chris's, yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So you talk about Hemstock and Jennings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I tried to remix that. It was a remix competition. I didn't win. But funny enough, I've actually recently remixed that officially Stop for... Stop it. Are you going to yeah. release it? The, Les is releasing it. Oh, uh, my God. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but it's going to be I on. need to hear this. Yeah, yeah. I need to hear this. Okay, right. We're going to go a bit dark now. Mm -hmm. So... You didn't know much about dance before you started making it. Yeah. As you know, similar thing happened to me. I, I listened to the odd bit, but I wasn't in it and then got booked for a gig and it blew up. But as soon as I started changing my social media and people found out that I was making dance music, obviously I had concerns from family about this topic I'm going to talk about. But then random people were messaging me and saying things like, you be careful, it's a very drug-laden industry, it's very dangerous. And actually, that is the biggest misconception oh, because yeah, yeah. especially with trance, yeah. that we're both sort of you know, your world and I'm delving into, it's euphoric, isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. and actually the euphoria, I feel that it's natural and it's caused it's by friendly. the music. Yeah. But there's such an outward misconce misconception in dance in general. Yeah. That drugs, 
you know, hardcore drugs and being like yeah. and wavy, which I'm sure some people some do. Some people are, yeah, yeah. However, not everyone. And I actually didn't like that, that you know, making dance, I was now being associated. Yeah, and I yeah. bet everyone thinks it's that. It's a stigma that's not yeah, true, really. Yeah, complete misconception. So my next question to you is, what do you think, aside from that one, uh, the any misconception in the industry is in the dance industry. Have you noticed any that people associate I, with making dance music or even being a DJ or producer? Well, they all think like it's like boom, boom, boom music. So you've got to be off your head. You've got to be on drugs. Yeah. But also, they people think that you know, like people go to the bars and stuff and that get a drink. People think oh, everyone goes there, get drunk, go on drugs. But yeah. it's it's but not like that. Drink. Drink. Yeah, exactly. Don't I don't drink much. Never yeah. took a drug in my life. Yeah. But. It's just like, it's because of the music, because they hear that beat, they all think it's, you know, to do with drugs. And I think because there's a lot of tracks are not, a lot of them are not vocal tracks, a lot of it is just music. Yes. So I think people think, oh, well, you need to be on something to listen to that. When yes, really, they don't know the feel. Especially the harder stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, they don't know it? the feel of it. Yes. Do you know, the emotions yes. and stuff like that. You and it's people outside of the dance world, isn't it, that get yeah. that conception because they don't know. They don't know, they don't go. They probably don't like that sort of music, so they just go, oh, it's just full of drugs. Yeah. And it's like, but the thing is, they say about drugs, you go to a house event or you go to garage or you go to um, drum and bass and stuff like that, they're worse. Some of them are worse. I mean, like, yeah. if you go to drum and bass events and, like, dark, darker music like that, mm. they're very, like, ag aggressive. And it's like, yes. there's a lot of fights, there's stabbings, there's all sorts happen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you won't... I that, do. That don't happen in the dan dance scene. Because no. everyone's friendly, everyone's there to... They're for the music. That's yeah. what it is. It's not a pulling place. It's there no, for the music. No, definitely. And I, I enjoy that. It's not... Um, it doesn't feel hostile. Yeah, yeah. And I've only just started going to raves... But I've just experienced exactly what you said. Everyone supports in in trance, especially yeah, I've yeah. witnessed. But in dance in general, everyone is there to feel love. Yeah, yeah. And euphoria, and just be free. That's not it. like fight. And as you were saying with with R and B, they actually have to have a specific license if you have an R and B genre event because really? of, of violence. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? The conceptions yeah. that that fly about, yeah. but. Yeah, it's friendly, right? Yeah, exactly. And not everyone's off the face. No, exactly. I mean, I have seen a few. <laughs> yeah, there are some. Yeah. I mean, Depends I on what. <laughs> the rebooter gig, I was trying so hard to remember my words because there was a geezer at the front, sunglasses and all, and he was literally like... Ooh. And his face is going... And I was like, this guy's happy, going. but I'm pretty sure it, that wasn't just, <laughs> you know, pure Not just excited euphoria. by the music. Yeah, 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 so I, I looked the other way because uh, that was quite amusing, to be fair. Whoever that guy is, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope you're watching. Right, we're going to stay dark now. We're going to, I'm going to ask you. Yeah. You, you've obviously been in the industry a long time and you see everyone having fun at these events. And like we say, it's all friendly, it's um, positive. But can you tell me the worst experience oh, yeah. you've had either in the studio or doing a live set just tell me, in music, in your music world, the, what's the worst thing that's happened? Oh, yeah, happened? I've, had a, I've had a couple. Um, they were gigs, really. Pick your worst. Well, the worst was I was booked to go to Ibiza on, like, uh, like a little tour. It's like I was going to have five gigs. Mini tour, yeah. Yeah, so the label yeah. was uh, Diablo Tracks. A bit of name dropping there, just to rub it in. That was Diablo <laughs> Tracks, everybody. <laughs> that's it, yeah. So they asked me to go out there because I, I did a remix for them and everything. I was like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, they love my music. I was like, okay. So I went out. They was like, yeah, we'll pay for your flights. We'll pay you, uh, was it, um, I think the overall tour was like 1,250 quid I would have got. Wow. So I was like, okay. So I'm having five gigs. Brilliant. Get all my records. So I'm carrying a record bag and my CDs. So like, yeah, come on, mate. <clears throat> Got your toothbrush. Got there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got, got my toothbrush. Everything was, I was looking forward to it. But I had a feeling, though, when my dad drove me down to Luton, because that's where they were from. I were thought, they flying you out, or did you have to I go? was with I was with uh, the, one of the label owners. Yeah. So I thought, oh, this is, yeah, this should be all right. But yeah. on the way down, I thought it was just had a feeling in my stomach. You know, your gut instinct tells you. And what was it telling you? Shouldn't go. Shouldn't have met that McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, go on. Bad Shouldn't curry. go. 
Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, because I had off for some other work and I was like, nah, I'm going to go to a beef on tour and they pay for flights so and everything. So I went, as soon as we got there, oh, uh, I'm not going to be able to, uh, we're going to have to do flyers. I thought, what do you mean flyers? I'll come out to play, not give out flyers. He goes, oh, uh, one of the guys been arrested and stuff, so he's not, he can't come out and stuff. I'm like, hang on a minute. I think it was a load of nonsense, to be honest. Oh, my gosh. And then I was like, uh, so I've come out here. What for? So you and did then, an accidental season in Ibiza. Oh, I got a free holiday. I got a free holiday, but... <laughs> And then, like, it come to the event, I was on near the end I was a bit tougher and sort of headlining. And, like, as I'm there, he says, oh, they're going to close it early. So I didn't get to go on. Oh, my God! Yeah, and then, like, they said, oh, we're cancelling the rest of the tour now while I was in IB for with them. And I'm like... Why did they cancel it? Just no one there? Cause no- yeah, they weren't getting numbers and obviously <gasps> they didn't do the promoting. And oh, was it a anything. big venue? It wasn't a massive venue. It was in, like, um, what's the place now? I've got the flies at home. It's, like, we weren't cafe... You didn't give them out then, the flyers. If you oh, stuck no them. way. <laughs> <laughs> no way, not my job. Wow. Because I thought they'd happens, done all that. though, doesn't it? Like, yeah, you yeah. can't guarantee the people, and there's so much goes into yeah. a live gig, not just from the producer, the DJ, like, doing all the sets and everything, but there's so much planning and preparation yeah. that goes into actually getting people there. Yeah. And I think unless you're like Britney Spears or one of the... I think you've got a huge, You huge, can't, yeah. like, you just can't guarantee can't numbers. Can't secure numbers. Yeah, it takes work, doesn't it? Hard yeah. yards. You Very. weren't willing to do them, were you? No, because I... Like, I not, not, do you not know who I am? <laughs> exactly, I've come on two tours in Australia. <laughs> so you don't know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> I've been on two tours in Australia. Now you, I'm playing around the country. Now you're saying I've got a flyer. Oh, my gosh. I bet that was mortifying, though. Would it was, because like, they words? got me over there, then they go and tell me this, and it's like, if you told me this before, I wouldn't have bothered. Have what did you do before. on the night? So they said it's cancelled. How do you get back from that? What did you do? I you just, don't really drink, so... I will, like, I don't, well... I, I walked off and then went, I was on the phone to my dad at the time. I spent about £300 on the phone bill because I was on the phone <laughs> to my dad the whole time. Going, effing and jeffing. But oh, gosh. Yeah, it's like, what a joke. You would be there, wouldn't you? Yeah, I was fuming. And cause... especially someone so reputable, like, you'd expect it from smaller, wouldn't you? Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I think you you have to put a lot of trust in the industry. Well, you know, that's the thing. If... For gigs. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've had it in Bristol as well, where I got, it was the same people no as well, way. got a booking for me. Who was get, it again? Diablo Trap. <laughs> <laughs> get down there in Bristol and it's like, oh yeah, we're going to shut early. So And I'm like, again? It's like, so did you, you didn't get to go on there either? No. Nah, that kicked off because my uncle came with us and he was going to get some people. I was like, oh, oh no. God. Not Darren's uncle. I know, yeah. Everybody run. I was like, oh God. <laughs> what a nightmare. But, yeah. That's not cool, is it, though? I mean, because nah. of the hours that go into putting... I had to draw the way down to Bristol as well. I, yeah, like you say, and it was, I had CDs ready, because it was well, it was CDJ 1000s then, but I had all CDs ready, got all my stuff with me, and then it's like, get all the way down to Bristol, and then it's like, nah, we're closing early. Because oh, the thing is, I'm hanging around, waiting yeah. for the set, and then I get told it's not going to happen. So. And of course, back then, like, social media wasn't a thing, was it? Nah. And that's how you do all your promo now, pretty exactly. much, isn't it? Like, yeah. So you I don't can't know. Flyer on the night and expect people to exactly. Come, unless oh, there's three oh. sets on the beach shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. So I ended up. I'll give you ten free shots. That's <laughs> it. I ended up for the rest of the time just going to clubs and what have you. And right. I ended up going to a couple of clubs on the guest list with somebody I knew because he he was. Uh, Go on, name drop. Ah, uh, you wouldn't know him. His name's Glenn, but we was in there with. Uh, I think it was Dave. No, it weren't Dave Pierce. It was um, who was on? There was some big artists on. I think it was Judge Jules and stuff. But we had guests, so we just we went in that. I was like, thank God I got this, would have gone mad. Yeah, so oh, it was all right in the end then, I guess. That was okay, yeah, but yeah. but then I had to chase some money when I got back. That was a nightmare. Gosh, uh, yeah, it's not fun. And nah. it's, that's not a, like a whole lot, is it? I mean, it's not bad for one gig, but... I know. Yeah, you have to chase it as well, gosh. Yeah, I, I had to get bailiffs and all sorts involved. Yeah. Stop it. I had to do a load of hunting down and stuff, yeah. That's a nightmare. Gangster D10. <laughs> yeah. They don't call you mercurial virus for nothing. <laughs> yeah, the virus will get you. Amazing. It, well, hopefully not. No, I've got the money in you. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, amazing. Well, what I'm going to do now then... Been to those dark places. Let's lighten it up. Yeah. Let's really lighten it up. So, if your music was an ice cream flavour, let's yeah. say, what would it be and why? Okay, so... And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be an existent. So, if you go Mercurial Virus, yeah. I'd say Strawberries and Cream. Oh, smooth, brother. That's it, because <laughs> it, it's got that... 
it's because it's soft. It's softer, isn't it? Like the breakdowns, it's nice and yes. fluffy, and so that's the cream. And like you've got obviously the the trance beats and the bass lines and the synths and, and that's, that's, so it's that's got tangy, it's yeah. got that bit of an edge to it. So so strawberries and cream for mercurial virus. Yeah, D ten, I'd say mint choc choc chip. <laughs> Because, chop, chop, yeah, so you're doing it in. now, you're producing now. That's it. <laughs> Mint choc chip, because so it, it's quite uh, the hard bits of chocolate. That's the hard pounding kicks and heavy, because it's dark, because it's quite dark as well. Yes, yes. I like what you did there. And that was with, clever. And with the mint, it's got obviously it's tangy, isn't it? It's quite it's a weird taste for some people. Yeah. So it's quite sharp. So then yes. obviously with the sounds, they are sharp. Like the lead sounds like really cut through. Yeah. And, and they that's... contrast, don't they, as well, really? Like so your two main brands, I know you've had other aliases over yeah, your yeah. time, but the two sort of mainstreams of what you do now, they are quite contrasting. Yeah, yeah. They Both are. trans. But one's not really dark, heavy. Yeah. And one's like the uplifting, emotional, like... Yeah. It's really... It's like both sides. It's like yin and yang, isn't it? It's like... Yes. Pff. I love that. One hard, one and, light. And do you have a preference over which flavour? I like strawberries and cream. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. But mint choc chip is my yeah, favourite flavour. Yeah, I do actually. like... I do like mint choc chip as well. Yeah. I like loads of flavours. From but, a musical perspective, what do you prefer? Or, or not? Or does it... They it both depends give on you different things. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it all depends on my emotions on the day. Yeah. Like if I'm in a bad mood or what something's happened, and I get in the studio, I'm like, right, hey, some aggressive hard kicks and yeah. sharp simps. So we're going mint yeah. chocolate. That's it. We're going when Darren's mint. angry, we're going mint chocolate. That's it, it'll be like a D10 flavour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then like, and then when you're in your feels, when I feel crazy. emotional, like I've of, of thinking of my dad or or what's going on in my life, and then I'll just drop in the emotional tracks because I love film music as well and stuff like that. So do you? Yeah, yeah, like Hans Zimmer and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that's interesting because that's also emotive, isn't it? Exactly. And I get like, that's the whole reason I do music. Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's emotion. portray emotion and actually without. Well, I mean, there is words sometimes yeah, yeah. in trance, sometimes not. But it's not actually the words. It's exactly as you described earlier. It's like the beats, the journey, and the contrast of light and dark. Yeah, yeah. Is something I do with my voice. Yeah. In one song. Are you, are you singing? So you won't. Yeah, and that's not traditional in trance to, no, to no, do no. that. But that's the same emotive thing, and that yeah. is what happens in a film. Yeah, exactly. So you could call a song a mini film, really, because it's yeah. the same thing, isn't it? it is, that yeah, it's yeah. doing and Definitely. that it's driving. Yeah. So yeah, that's not as, as weird as it sounds. So on films then, I'm just a sneaker questioning. What is your favourite film if you're into film music? The one that represents what? like your favourite musical the actual, sound. The actual film or the actual music? music the music from, the film? from a film. Okay. So if you're into I'd your film music. Like the oh, really? Epic. Now we're free. Not Blade? Nah. Um, I'd definitely go with Now Free because it's the emotion. Yeah. It's sad, but it's, it's so nice. But I also like Da Vinci Code. With... I've never actually heard the music in that because I'm so oh, focused yeah. on figuring out what the hell's happening. Yeah, <laughs> like, like uh, puzzles and stuff. Mm. But yeah, no. I'm yeah, if you listen, I did um, I did a I'll say remix bootleg called Rose Line of it, which loads of people love it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's been out about three years or something now. So many of your stuff I need to listen to. Uh, Do so that much. later. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. honestly, you've been going a long time. I know. Um. Okay. So next question then. Are yep. you ready? You yeah. Tell the truth. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Nothing but the truth. Um, okay. This is where you're allowed to be really opinionated. So you and I were on guest list for Paul Van Dyke, weren't we? Yeah. A few weeks ago. So we're there. We're in the crowd doing our thing, not taking drugs. May I add? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just watch everything else going on. We're barely really it's party. But yeah. no, we. Um, so we're in the crowd, and we're watching Paul Van Dyke, and we both kind of looked at each other because we heard him dropping. Hard trance, yeah, yeah, which is completely not Paul, Paul Van Dyke, yeah, yeah. But with genre fusion for this year in all music, like commercial chart, everything, yeah, everyone's yeah. bringing back 90s, they're doing genre fusion, artists are changing their game, and that's exactly what Paul Van Dyke did. What I want to know, and this is where you can literally lay out, like, <laughs> have a whinge and a moan, okay. right? Because I want to know what you predict for the industry and I want you to cover things that annoy you as well changes because you've been 
in it yeah, for so yeah. long, you'll have seen so much happen. And I think you'll have a really good view of what's coming. Yeah. I'll, so I I'll, want yeah. to know, so things like technology, things like how you sell your music, how you make money from it. Yeah. Um, and also like social media, which is a bit that gets me a bit mad sometimes. Yeah. So like, let's just talk to me about that. What do you predict in all of those things? So I, there's something starting now a lot where yeah. artists are creating other aliases to like big artists are creating other aliases. Yeah. Um, to do harder stuff. Yeah. So you got like on nine drop some. Yeah. Schneider's done one. Alan Watts has done one. Yeah. Uh, obviously, John O'Callaghan did one before with Keith. 40, 50. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed more and more artists are doing both. So they're doing a techno y type alias or hard, yeah. harder alias, but also keep their big trance name. But the trouble is with that, I get it because I've been doing my D10 since what? Do you think 2004? it's moneymakers or do you think they're still doing what they love and they're bored of doing one thing? I think they're following a trend. Right. Because I think like they're getting more bookings out of it. Yeah. Because they're on big labels like Alan Watts with uh, Armada. He gets two slots on the... Would you say they're selling out? I wouldn't say they're selling out. I just think... I'm wondering if the labels are telling them to do it. Ah. Because then, you know, like... Uh, it's that, isn't it? There is, yeah, because they get more, more of their artists on the lineups. So then you're getting these artists yeah. filling rosters for all these events. Like yeah. big events, like Dream State or, you know, Unconscious, Luminosity. Yeah. You'll see them playing like three or four gigs in one one... One gig. Really? Yeah, because of, they'll have like, say for instance, Luminosity will have John O'Callaghan. Yeah. Then they'll have, then they'll have Key 4050 the next day. Yeah. So he's basically getting paid twice to do two gigs where there's art, other artists get missed off because these people are having two They're like gigs, saturated, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. and that's because they've got ownership from these labels they, and they've and, got obviously the contract. And obviously their name, original name. So. Do you think that's cutting people out then a yeah. little bit? So I so think what's going to happen, people out. I think what it's trying to do is, and I've also noticed on Beatport as well yeah. recently, yeah. where you've got the trance chart yeah, and it's full of techno. Oh, There's yeah. hardly any trance in there. This is genre fusion. Yeah. yeah. This is what I'm saying. But I'm out of like releasing techno and it's like, you look at the, the list and it's like Charlotte DeWitt with a push remix by yeah. Universal Nation. That's up the top, top two, top three, top four. And you got all these other techno. And I'm thinking, this is a trance chart. It's yes. not even the same genre, but it's like they're pushing all the small labels out, while the big labels just keep the top top tier. Yeah, it's becoming like a commercial world. And yes, like yes, top industry it hundred percent is. I think it always has been, but I think definitely now there's no little pockets of money to be made from. Yeah, niche. exactly. It's all, I guess, monopolising. Yeah, controlling like, it. like everything, isn't it? Yeah out there Definitely. at the minute it's all just going into bigger streams yeah but if you think about it from a business perspective i think they have to do that in a way because they've lost so much money yeah. labels with the internet and artists as we were saying earlier yeah, that are yeah. able to now start themselves they can go and there's the subscriptions of production software that you can yeah. get for 10 pound a month or free even yeah, yeah. and templates and stuff and you know you've got internet at home do they just go on they make this track and they go go on it social yeah you know and it's harder now isn't it for the yeah. labels um to sort of make their money from an artist yeah definitely really. So, yeah, that might be why, but I agree with you. I've seen that, and it's, it is genre fusion, but it's also driven by commercials. Yeah, 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 exactly. It all comes down to money, right? Yeah, if it's down to money in the industry. No, I in wish I was industry. better with it. I wish I cared about it. Like, <laughs> Let me make a song that people love. Hang on, I'm not going to pay my mortgage. Now. Exactly, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I think. Final days, it was good because when you made a track, it had to be good enough to get on vinyl. Yeah. And the only people who could play it were people who bought the vinyl. Yeah. Because you, you can't get it online. It's, it's and physical, there's something physical in format. that having to have the effort to leave your phone screen, leave the computer, go to a shop and buy a yeah. vinyl. Yeah, oh, it's right? amazing times. Amazing. Yeah. Because you used to there's go into... There's still vinyl shops though, right? Like, yeah, there it's is. it's niche but... now, isn't yeah, it? In an yeah. older generation, I find. But I did hear it's coming back. It is starting to come back. Yeah. But whether it'll be as big as it did, because obviously no. like, carrying big record bags, artists are like, oh, First, a a, yeah, that's a little cart. The USB stick and the headphones is perfect, but the vinyl days were so good because like you'd go into a shop. Like I used to go to Hard Farm Records in town. Yeah. And uh, 
When, when you say town, where is town? Birmingham. Oh, you wouldn't have guessed. Guess. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but again, it's a massive warehouse full of vinyl, every genre going. Yeah. Right. So you go, I'd go in the trance and hard dance area. Yeah. I'd like look through them, pick out the names that are recognised, Scott Projects, Scott Project, loads of Scott Projects, because a lot of imports as he well. He was obviously massive in, in the vinyl world then. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's had so many, he's been going for years. Like yeah. He's in the early 90s. He had been on Universal and yeah, big yeah. labels. So, so I was like, Scott Project, Scott Project. And then I was going all through the trance tunes. So I'd grab a load of them out of the trance section, out of the heart, big pile up, plonk them <laughs> on the desk, because they always had all these decks lined up. Right, and listen. Oh, I like that one, yeah. Buy that one. And that's what it's like. And it was exciting hearing that needle, bit of crackling. Yeah. Then it's clean beats, and it was just... It was an amazing feeling. But like now, obviously, digital, yeah. it's hard because if you've got... Every every day, there's loads of releases. You've been yes. going to sit there going for every single track. Yeah. So unless it's like being played by a big artist and you hear it and go, oh, I'll buy that. Mm. Or if they advertise it as one of the top tracks to buy and that, that's probably the... Oh, I'll have a listen to that. Yeah. But it's, if you've done a track and it's not out there known by anyone it's just going to be just left yeah just definitely unless you drive it through social media yeah. and someone catches on because it's all like it used to be about being found didn't it yeah, yeah. in any genre of music yeah, that's true but there's so many online now yeah. isn't there and like how justin bieber <laughs> drop, drop the beeves you know he got found on youtube and yeah nothing really happens like that anymore does it nah. because everyone's like we were saying earlier it's all about paid search and promotion yeah. and you pay to be seen now. And that's the thing, like, with social media now, yeah. it's all you pay to reach more people. So if you've got your own page, musician's page, yeah, you could have, like, a million followers. Mm -hmm. And it'll if you just put something up, it might only reach, like, 200 people. That's right. And then they'll a say... A very like, small percentage, we'll see it. Yeah, and then it's, like, boost, pay this amount. Yeah. Boost for this tier. Have you ever done it? Nah. No. I just think it should be real if someone likes your stuff. And they'll look for it or they'll find it on the page and go, Definitely. oh, I like that. Do you know the thing, though? It does work. I know. With my whole career, like, knowing about that digital world, it does work. Mm. So it's like, but the, the money that it costs to reach... <laughs> so I you're not going to get the return sometimes. You're in debt. But, yeah. but really, if you think about it, that's what labels used to be. When you'd sign to yeah. a label, you'd be in debt to them for tours for years. Yeah, for yeah, because all the royalties, they've got to recuperate. You. Yeah, so just... Pros and cons, it's yeah. similar, but it's just harder, I think, when you're a musician and you've got costs, you've got to live. Yeah. And streaming, we all know, doesn't make a lot nah, of money. Nah. I think it's one million streams is three grand. That's right, yeah. On Spotify. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's not. No, mm. not at all. And, and to get a million streams, it's pretty hard work, to be fair. Of course it is, yeah. Because, again, it all drives each other, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So social media, then, on this, what's your prediction? You, you, you're saying... You I think, think it's going to get worse. I think it's going to be... People going to have to pay or they're not going to be found or seen. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a paid service and it's going to get more expensive. So yeah. The, so top labels, it'd be all right for them. Yeah. So our models go, bosh. It's like top. if you pay, you get there, don't you? Yeah, like yeah. Just basically now it's who's got the most money if you're an indie artist. Yeah, exactly. But... It's like the pop industry, isn't it, where, you know, like X Factor and all that nonsense. It yeah. was all like people was already put in place for that show. Yes. They're already signed to them. You're not going to name it then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's the one with the man that wears high trousers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's all set up for yeah. them to go through anyway. It's so just they're true. building up oh an audience. God. That is one of my, like, I'm going to have a moan now. Go on. It's one of my gripes, right? Because as a singer, yeah. everyone goes, why don't you go on X yeah. Factor, love? Have you, yeah. have you tried it? And I'm like, well, I lived in London and was exposed to the truth about those shows, yeah, yeah. which are television shows. But, like, you can't say that to Doris, who just likes you singing. I know. Cover. Like, you they can't, say, I can't go say off on to Doris. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it's true. You're quite right. It's all pre-empted. It's all kind of... When it's a TV, bravado. that's what it's like. TV's Absolutely. like that. It's mm. fake. You, you always lose the music in TV, I think. Yeah, yeah. Unless, of course, it's film. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're nearly there. A few more questions for you. Okie dokies. Are you all right? Yeah. Are you doing? I've been quite nice to you, actually. Say <laughs> <Eight> strip <laughs> sessions. <laughs> Not anymore. That's it. Tell me something that no one knows about you. Well, I would say 
I love cats. <laughs> I'm the oh crazy cat lady. Crazy cat lady. <laughs> I love them. The curial virus, That's the crazy it. cat lady. Yeah, I love cats. Got oh, four. I love cats as well, but I do. They're, they're just so comforting and lovely. Like, yeah. Everywhere I go. I'm, I'm not so the point dying to pack. make puns here. I'm trying <laughs> not to in case children watch strip sessions, which I hope they never do. But <laughs> oh, I don't, don't even think you. Sorry. <laughs> but, nah. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be good. Okay. You love cats. Yeah. <laughs> do people is this common knowledge though I don't see you posting many cats on social media so maybe not I did put something up the other day actually about if uh, if I had a woman in the car seat and I said oh look, look at that nice cat and I was like oh it's only a cat I'll, <gasps> I'll kick him out and put the cat in there <laughs> oh my gosh how many have you got have you got, got four you've got four cats yeah yeah and I've had you... cats loads of cats we've had uh, one passed away one disappeared yeah, as um, they do. Yeah, we have. They're not very loyal. It depends, yeah, really. I know people say they're not loyal, but um, the ones we got now, they were all strays. Yeah. But they just they just follow me. In the, like, I'll go to bed. That's it. They're all around me. Like, I don't know. It's like they're protecting me or guarding me or something. They're very spiritual cats are. Yes. Very and you're spiritual, spiritual aren't yeah, you? Because yeah. I know, and I don't mind A lot of people don't know that either. Like, That's it. I into... think an animals are super spiritual. You're quite right. And you, you lost, obviously, your dad yeah, some yeah. time well, ago. Was, so you grieved. Dad... Was that the reason that the cats... Nah, came? before that. I've them. always loved cats. I had a cat when I was younger. Uh, but then we didn't have cats for a long time. Yeah. But then um, my mum decided she wanted... I think when she lost her uh, mum, I think she wanted a cat. There you go, grief. Yeah, grief yeah. So anim she, animals are the best. And then she got uh, a cat, and I was like, oh, she, she actually picked two. Yeah. Um, and then the one died before we got got her. Mm. So then they gave us this other one. We, my mum fell in love with before we even had the other ones. Yeah. And uh, we ended up with her. So it was like fate. It was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she passed away. But the other one, she went missing on the when my dad was ill. He was, it was only about five days before he passed away she was in his room and then yeah. next minute she disappeared she, she so sent strange. something she sent really? something yeah, and she's never seen her again Aww. so I don't know what happened to her but you've got four now yeah imagine it now I'm just thinking <laughs> about I mean, you, some, and you some in your bed like... surrounded by p oh my god sorry <laughs> I don't sorry. know that I don't know sorry. that <laughs> <laughs> I did it I made the joke yeah, exactly. I had to it is strip sessions after all exactly alright so Darren is a crazy cat lady Mr Mercurial virus <laughs> do you it. turn yeah, that, trans people don't know God. that. Yeah. Loves cats. Yeah, I've got a soft side. <laughs> you have got a soft side. Yeah. To say you make hard trans, you're probably one of the nicest people I've met. <laughs> really? True. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Although your DJ picture of, of I know, Ray, a bit mean. Oh, you look mean there. I won't mess with you on that. <laughs> you look, <laughs> look more like your, your hard uncle in that one. <laughs> 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 All right, so a couple of questions left. Yep. Favourite collab you've ever done? And, and note you've worked with massive artists, as we were saying earlier, you've had like Radio 1 dance show, yep. chart, all of that. You know a lot of big, big names. Yeah. Who has been, out of all the remixes, all the collabs that you've ever done or people you've worked with, who has been your favourite one or favourite track and why? Favourite track? Hmm. Favourite person to collaborate, I'd say Les. Do you want to tell everyone who Les is? Okay. <laughs> Les Hemistock from Hemistock and Jennings. Yes. Because um, it's actually a funny story because when I just, after I lost my dad, I built the studio and I got back into doing music. Right. Um, I work, so Mirage was out when I was first got into trance. Yeah, and Mirage was, was massive, Huge. wasn't it? Yeah. Beautiful song. Oh, it's on Gate Crash and I got it on, that's where I first oh. heard it. I was like, oh, I love this track. And yes. then when I, obviously Hemistock and Jennings Mirage mm -hmm. and I had it on vinyl. And I was like, oh, I'd love to do it. Look, I got back into the trance. Was it the original one or the original. chill out mix? I original. Had, it was the original, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to do like an up to date remix of this. So I, I was like, let's find who done it, Les Hemstock. And I was looked on Facebook. I found it. I was like, oh, friend request. I was like, all right, Les. I'm so Is sorry. that how you did it? Is that how you that's met how Les? I met, yeah, that's how I started chatting to him. But at first, it was a bit coy, like, uh, with the remixes and stuff. He's like, right. oh, yeah, just have a go. Like, uh, he didn't send me any parts, nothing. And he's like, just have a go. I was like, oh, okay. How did you get the track then if he didn't send you? Well, what happened was, I was obviously, I'd 
a bit later on, I, I didn't do anything with Mirage. And then all of a sudden, I had releases on Subculture with uh, yes. Turning Point. Huge, which was huge, huge label. Yeah. Huge release, yeah. Turning Point. Billy Gillies did the remix. Yes, yes. Um, which Armin smashed out. And then Armin did a bootleg of that. And whose was the original of Turning Point? Mine. Mom's original. Oh, it's yours? Yeah, yeah. Okay, got you. Which is, funny enough, t- a turning point in my career in trance, because that was huge. Isn't that amazing? What year was that? That'll be 20, well, that'll be 2019 or 2020. I think it'll be 2019. Yeah. I think. That was yeah. a turning point. I love yeah. that. Yeah, so everything seems to be like that with, when it comes to my music. It's always the title determines something. Yeah. But then... So obviously I told him I'd got that release and he was listening to my stuff. He thought, oh, actually, yeah. He realised, didn't he? I <laughs> he mean, really he's a polite wasn't. man, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah. he's probably just like... Mm, so. Yeah, he probably thought, oh, Who's is this random? in my DMs? <laughs> yeah. Not that he'd ever say it like that. <laughs> <That's> it, <yeah. laughs> Imagine him saying, up in my DMs. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so, so he, he probably didn't realise that yeah, you yeah. had talent at that point. And, yeah. and there are so many out there, aren't oh, there? Yeah. So I, I can understand that. And then he realised you were all right. Yeah. And you then, are all right on what you do. And then he was like, oh, um, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the parts. And then he told me that Future Sound of Egypt one, had signed... Uh, and these are all huge labels, oh, Future, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, huge. So he was like, Future Sound of Egypt to yeah. uh, release Mirage. And they said that Andrew Rebecca's doing a, a remix, who's mm-hmm. one of their artists. Yeah. And he said, oh, yeah, I'll send you the parts. you have a... You have a go at the remix, and uh, if it's good enough, they'll sign it. So I did it, and he got signed, and it got released with like, the others. Yeah, amazing. And how did it do? Do all right. It got in the charts somewhere. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, yeah it did all right. Brilliant. Had some support and stuff, so amazing. Good. But I got and, a and that's, your, fa- that's music, your favorite so. collab, that one. Yeah, yeah. Was that the first collab you did with Les? Then that what that particular one is it that? Would, yeah, because uh, obviously it was my own. Because I know you've done it's quite re- a few. I sang one of them actually. Yeah, didn't yeah, I? that's it. Yeah, uh, nothing but you. Yeah, yeah, that was that was good. That was a good uh, collab as well. Because he's he's really good. Because we work together. Yeah. Um, he'll send me some MIDI files and stuff like that. He'll send me like an old track that he did from Yonks ago. Yeah. And then he'd be like. Oh, he wants me, to bring it back. Yeah, yeah, bring it back. Or we'll change the title or we'll do a new remix. Yeah. The Mercurial Vora style. But like, what everyone's feeling, I was, I, every track's different. Yeah. Not one is the same. Yeah. So yeah. like, you'll send me it and then I'll get the parts, I'll listen and I'll tweak things, I'll tweak the melody or the chords or try and add some notes and stuff and make it different. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on Strip Sessions. This has been the wonderful D10, Mercurial Virus, and I'm Francesca Fay. We'll see you later, Bob. Yeah, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me.